to another short tips video for this, the OM1. The OM1 has a pretty wild selection of drive speeds for photography with a few trade-offs and one major disadvantage, which is its comparatively small buffer size. There are quite a lot of options available around the sequential shooting speeds in this camera, so I'm going to outline what I tend to use for wildlife photography and the sort of trade-offs I make in that. There is one thing to note uh, before going on, which is that depending on the lens that's attached to your camera, the speeds that are available change. I've had to stick the 300mm on the OM1 for this video just so that I can see all of the available drive speeds because they're not all available when I have the small 17mm lens attached. So ignoring single shot because that's self-explanatory, uh, first up we have sequential shooting mode. This uses the mechanical shutter at a maximum frame rate of 10 FPS. You can adjust it down slightly. Uh, I don't use this mode. I don't see the point on the OM1 because the rolling shutter is so low due to the speed of the sensor that there's not a huge benefit to using it and it has the downside of adding noise when you're shooting which can disturb animals so I don't use that mode. Instead what I shoot in the majority of the time is silent sequential mode which is the first of the electronic shutter modes but it shoots at a maximum of 20 fps it does have viewfinder blackout, which the faster modes do not. So that can potentially be a disadvantage, but I find that I actually like this mode the most in terms of the way it works. And it has the highest range of available ISO options for the speed. When you move into the higher modes, you're going to be limited in terms of your ISO options. So I find this the best walk around mode. It allows you to use all of the available ISO options on the camera. I use this mode probably 90% of the time. Uh, I find that it's the most comfortable for me in terms of the amount of photos it takes. And it's not so fast that you exhaust the buffer on the OM1 too quickly. You can get a good sort of five seconds of continuous shooting out of it if you need to. And that can be very good when you're tracking birds in flight or when there's a potential event going to happen, but you want the photos leading up to it. Uh, I, I quite like using this mode. Rather counterintuitively, the next option in the list on the OM1 is actually the fastest speed mode, but it has a disadvantage in that it only supports single shot autofocus and metering. Uh, I don't use this mode. Uh, it can shoot at a maximum of 120 frames a second and you can turn it down to 100 or to 60. But I don't really have a use for this except in combination with Pro Capture, which is a different option later on. It's limited to a maximum ISO value of 12,800, which is something to note. Um, but yes, I don't really use this mode. SH2 is a much more usable high speed mode. This shoots at a maximum of 50 frames per second. Uh, or you can turn it down to 25. I do occasionally use this mode if I'm tracking very fast birds like swallows and I want to get a lot of shots of their wing movements to try and capture them at the exact right point. Um, just keep in mind that you're only going to get about two seconds of shooting before you exhaust the buffer because the buffer on the own one is only around 90 photos and at 50 frames a second, that's under two seconds in theory. Uh, fast SD cards will help with this. Finally, we have the Pro Capture modes. So these are available with either the silent sequential option, the 120 frames a second option, or the 50 frames a second option. I only really use Pro Cap SH2 because if I want to capture an event, I want it as fast as possible. I want to capture the perfect frame of that event. So. I use it for birds taking off. I have this bound to a custom function and I use a button to toggle this on and off. I find Pro Capture a much more useful situation in which to use the SH1 and SH2 modes. So I still don't use the SH1 version of Pro Capture very often because you get one second, if that, of photos. The only time I've used it is when photographing nuthatches returning to their nest. 
they're very very fast and i wanted to just capture that explosion out of the nest or something like that uh, and it worked okay for that but it was in a dark area and the this mode is limited to a maximum ISO of 12,800 again. So you are going to be somewhat limited in that regard. But if you're on a tripod and you're focusing at a specific point, that mode can be useful. What I use much more often is ProCap SH2 mode. I use this for birds taking off in particular uh, because you can half press the shutter, wait for the bird to take off and just press it as you've seen that thing happen. Uh, because I try to react quite quickly, I have my buffer size set to a 30 frame buffer because otherwise you end up taking far too many photos. And sometimes you want to be able to maintain the the action sequence going just a little bit longer in case something interesting happens, like the bird pauses in midair or something like that. So it's nice to be able to hold the shutter a little bit longer and get a longer sequence. So I've turned the buffer size down to about 30 I vary that a little bit, but that seems to be just enough for my reaction speed. But depending on your reaction speed, you might need to extend that or reduce it if you've got better reaction times than me. So to summarize, for most of my bird photography, I shoot at uh, 20 FPS in silent sequential. The viewfinder blackout doesn't bother me. I'm used to DSLRs anyway. The buffer lasts longer in that mode and you have the widest of amount of options for ISO available to you. For birds taking off when uh, they're perched and I'm waiting for something to happen and potentially for other events, so like uh, I'm watching birds flying and I'm expecting them to clash in midair or something like that. Then I use the ProCap SH2 mode set to 50 FPS with a 30 frame buffer. I hope that was helpful. I'd be really interested to know what other people are using. Please put that in the comments if you'd like to and uh, thank you for watching. Until next time.